My name is Lisa Allen Agostini. I'm a writer from Trinidad and Tobago, and I am the author of the young adult novel Home Home, which was published in May 2020 by Delacourt Press of New York. The book is about um, a Trinidadian girl who's 14 who uh, attempts suicide and her mom sends her away to recover by her aunt in Canada. So this is an excerpt of her hospitalized about her hospitalization. I had a nervous breakdown. This is what I remember. I opened my eyes to a white fluorescent strip light. The bed below me was hard and narrow. I tried to turn, feeling the thin sheet sliding on the vanilla mattress cover and reached out to push myself up. That's when I noticed I was wearing a strange gown and had an IV drip in my arm. I looked around. Five other kids lay in railed beds like mine around the room, mostly sleeping or playing on their phones. One was awake and looking at me. There was a giant yellow banana painted on the wall behind his bed. I guessed it was the children's ward of a hospital. It was day. I could see light through the windows and one wall, but I couldn't tell what time it was. My stomach burned like acid. I had a sore throat too. Banana Kid heard me clearing it and took it as an invitation to chat. He asked in a friendly, curious tone, Use the one who take tablets to kill yourself? I hear the nurses talking about you. I slumped back down and turned my face away. Luckily, I was in a corner. I was alive. I didn't know how to feel about that. Should I be disappointed or relieved? Nursey! Banana Kid yelled. Look, the girl who take the tablets wake up. I swung around to complain, but the words froze in my mouth when I noticed there was a counter by the doorway to the ward where two women in white sat doing paperwork. One of them, a chubby brown-skinned lady, sighed loudly and creaked to her feet. Her lack of amusement showed in her stiff neck. Shh! Hush, Clive! You feel because you're living here, you could ball out any old way? Have some behavior! After scolding him in a stage whisper, she said to me in a normal voice, Missy, how are we this morning? So it was morning then. As she waddled toward my bed, I shrank back into the hard mattress. She took my arm and checked the ivy needle stuck in the bend of it. Clear liquid dripped from the plastic bag hanging on the metal stand, going down a skinny plastic tube into my arm via the needle in my vein. It looked just like on TV, I remember thinking. Doctor's on his way, she said. She put a blood pressure cuff around my arm and pushed some buttons. I lost interest and looked back toward the wall as she took my temperature and pulse. The machine beeped, squeezing my arm, and beeped again and relaxed. I didn't watch as she unwrapped the cuff. I kept my face to the wall until she said, Why would a nice, long, nice young girl like you with so much to live for try to take your own life? That would be such a loss, you're so beautiful. Her tone was kind and sympathetic. I turned just enough to see her face. She had relaxed and wasn't looking so stiff anymore. There was a spark in her eye. You know who can help you with those feelings? I shook my head. She leaned in. Jesus can help you, dear heart. Just call his precious name, Jesus. She closed her eyes and started to pray for me right there. I wasn't offended. On the contrary, it was kind of nice to have someone express regret that I might have died. Still, she was a stranger who was breathing in my face and making presumptions about my spiritual life. How did she know I wasn't already calling on Jesus and Mary and Joseph and a wide variety of saints? I mean, I wasn't, but I could have been. And wasn't it super unprofessional of her to pray for me? I was a patient. I was pretty sure there were rules about that kind of thing. She rambled on for a while, adding a few verses from the book of Psalms I recognized from church. She was starting, I was starting to get hungry when the doctor arrived. A tall, skinny old man strode in at the head of a flock of younger doctors. 
he was the only one not wearing a white coat. Instead, he had on a sharp pinstripe suit. He must have been boiling in that heat. The nurse muttered a hurried amen, handed over my medical chart to him and stood to one side away from the herd. So, he said nothing else, just looked at me. The junior doctors were like ghosts standing behind him. My hunger vanished, replaced by a jittery feeling. I wanted to cry. I was on the verge of ripping out the ivy and making a run for it when he finally spoke again. No smartphone, I see. Good. Keep it that way. Social media is terrible for you. So, young lady, I understand you took some tablets. Why? I had nothing to say. The tears were quivering behind my lashes now, but they hadn't yet fallen. My world was a tight bubble of rage, pain, and shame. I felt dirty and pointless. You know you could have hurt yourself. I closed my eyes. Of course I knew. That was the whole point. I would hurt myself until the pain stopped forever. The tears squeezed out and ran down my cheeks, but I didn't answer him. How could I explain the ache I felt inside, the torment that ripped me to pieces when I was alone? I hate myself. I think I deserve to be dead. The world would be a better place without me in it. Yeah, right. I could totally tell him that. He would completely get it. He waited still. Stubbornly, I remained silent. Finally, he said kindly, we will keep you under observation for a few days. That medication you took can cause permanent organ damage. So we'll watch to make sure that didn't happen. I want to talk to you about why you took the tablets. Did you mean to harm yourself? There it was, the big question. Crazy girl, were you trying to commit suicide when you swallowed a full bottle of your mother's painkillers? I opened my teary eyes and darted looks at the doctors and the ward behind them. Banana Kid leaned forward in his bed. The nurse raised an eyebrow and pursed her lips. I lay back, closed my eyes and pretended to go to sleep. When I wouldn't answer any more questions, the doctor talked quietly to the nurse before touching my shoulder. She's going to give you some medicine, he said and left. From behind my closed eyelids, I heard him being followed by the cloud of younger doctors. The nurse remained and fiddled with my drip. Then t she too left me alone and I drifted off. Thank you.